Many people in the world are consumers of non-veg. A large proportion of this non-veg food comes from the seas. Have you ever wondered who's the biggest exporter when it comes to seafood? And how much of this seafood is consumed by this exporter nation? We are about to discuss one of the most hard-to-believe fish farms that'll shock you. China is the world's largest exporter of fish. They import a significant amount of seafood, and the country's seafood market is expected to reach a value of $53.5 billion by 2027. The nation has one-fifth of the world's population and is responsible for one-third of the world's reported fish production, as well as two-thirds of the world's reported agriculture production. Isn't that amusing? China reported catching 17.1 million tons of wild fish in the rivers, lakes, and the ocean in 2005 greatly exceeding the United States 4.9 million tons, which play second. More illegal, unreported, and uncontrolled fishing occurs in China than in any other country thanks to its commercial fishing fleet. Two-thirds of China's reportedly produced fish are raised through aquaculture, which involves keeping fish in ponds, lakes, and tanks. They reported a harvest of 32.4 million tons in 2005, more than 10 times that of India, which came in second with 2.8 million tons. By 2027, it is anticipated that the aquaculture market in the nation will be worth $177.3 billion. Guangdong, Shandong, Fujian, Jiangsu, and Hubei are the main aquaculture-producing provinces in China. The major aquaculture-producing regions are often clustered in the coastal regions. The seas surrounding the Galapagos Islands are frequently visited by a sizable Chinese fishing fleet of hundreds of ships. The reefer vessel Fu Yuan Yulang 999, which had almost 6,000 frozen sharks, including whale sharks, was taken by the Ecuadorian Navy in the Galapagos Marine Reserve in 2017. Each member of the crew was found guilty of unlawful fishing and given a four-year prison sentence. The vessel's owner was also fined $6 million. Authorities and members of Ecuador's civil society accused the Chinese of fishing without regard for the rules or the law. China is also expanding its offshore fish farms, has large-scale salmon farms in the Yellow Sea, and plans to build the first large-scale fish farming vessel of 100,000 tons by March 2022. China has been the world's top supplier of fish and fish products since 2002. Can you make a rough estimate of how much these exchanges might come down to? Aquatic plants were included in exports worth $7.7 .7 billion in 2005, with the primary markets being the United States, Japan, and the Republic of Korea. They imported a total of $4 billion worth of fish and fish products in 2005, ranking sixth among all countries. According to her reported returns, China consumed 25.8 kilograms of fish per capita in 2003, which was higher than the anticipated 16.5 kilograms per person for the rest of the world. In 2010, this country produced 60% of the world's aquaculture by volume and employed 14.5 million people, 26% of the world's population, in fishing and aquaculture, or FAO. The world's most highly supported fishing sector is in China. With $5.9 billion in such subsidies provided in 2018, it also has the biggest proportion of detrimental subsidies, which make it lucrative to overfish dwindling populations. This contrasts with the detrimental subsidies provided by the United States, $1.1 billion, the European Union, $2 billion, and Japan, $2.1 billion. Fuel subsidies make up the majority of these subsidies, and they increase carbon emissions. In 2013, 94% of Chinese subsidies for fishing went toward fuel. There is a very popularized concept of floating farms that are still wished by many countries, yet China has managed to achieve it. So what are floating farms? How are fishes grown on these farms? In which provinces of this nation can you expect a floating farm? There are enormous fish farms where marine crustaceans like shrimp and mollusks like oysters are cultivated in man-made cages in the protected coastal waters of the Bohai Sea, Yellow Sea, East China Sea, and the South China Sea. These farms are made of a vast network of interconnecting timber platforms and paths that support floating netted enclosures. Over these, fishermen have built wooden cottages and huts where entire families reside. One-third of the world's total fish production and two-thirds of the world's aquaculture production is produced in China, which is also the world's largest consumer of fish. The production of fish in ponds, lakes, and tanks is solely attributed to aquaculture, which produces two-thirds of all fish in this country. Fish farming has been practiced in this nation for more than 3,000 years, but the sector truly took off in the 1990s. There have been some disadvantages to floating farms in the near future. However, there are other alternatives to floating farms. 
One of them is inline agriculture. So what is inline agriculture? Agriculture on land used up 237.8 million hectares and generated 813,000 tons in 1979. They used 485.8 million hectares and generated 10.938 million tons in 1996. Inland agriculture generated 100,000 tons in that year in 17 provinces. Pond culture is the most popular method of inland agriculture, 73.9% in 1996. The Pearl River Basin and the Yangtze River have the greatest concentration of these ponds. Anhui, Guangdong, Hubei, Hunan, Jiangsu, Jiangxi, and Shandong are among the seven provinces they cover. The government has also supported developments in rural areas to get rid of poverty. The industry is important in terms of nutrition since it expands seafood consumption in inland regions where it has historically been low. Agriculture on land used up 237.8 million hectares and generated 813,000 tons in 1979. They used 485.8 million hectares and generated 10.938 million tons in 1996. Inland agriculture generated 100,000 tons in that year in 17 provinces. Additionally, exotic species from other regions of the world such as Colossoma brachypomum, tilapia, paddlefish, toad catfish, silver salmon, and rainbow trout are farmed. Since the 1980s and 1990s, extensive turtle farming has also been practiced, primarily with the Chinese soft-shell turtle Pelodiscus sinensis. Based on a 2002 survey of 684 turtle farms, researchers calculated that these farms had a herd of more than 300 million animals in total. They sold more than 128 million turtles annually, weighing a total of around 93,000 tons and fetching about $750 million. Within the 10-meter isobath in marine habitats, extensive farm cultivation of marine plants and animals can be implemented using existing culture technologies. China has a total of 1.33 million hectares of arable sea, including shallow seas, mud flats, and bays. Less than 9% of these places were farmed before 1980, and the species present there were mostly limited to mussels, kelp and laver, or porifera. The size of the cultivated shallow sea was raised from 25,200 to 114,200 hectares between 1989 and 1996. The size of the mudflat from 266,800 to 533,100 hectares, and the size of the bay from 131,300 to 174,800 hectares. 415,100 tons were produced on 117,000 hectares in 1979 and 4.38 million tons on 822,000 hectares in 1996. The government has promoted the importation of numerous marine species since the 1980s such as the big shrimp or prawn Pinaeus chinensis, as well as scallop, mussel, sea bream, abalone, grouper, tilapia, and the mud mangrove crab Scylla serrata. China was the world's greatest producer of farmed shrimp in 1989, with 186,000 tons produced. Infected by a viral illness in 1993, production fell to 89,000 tons by 1996. This was ascribed to poor management practices, such as overfeeding and high stock densities. Reich Watson and Daniel Pauly, two fishery scientists, expressed their concerns in a letter to Nature in 2001 about China's over-reporting of its wild fisheries catch in the 1990s. They claimed that this made it appear that the global catch since 1988 was increasing annually by 300,000 tons, when in fact it was shrinking annually by 350,000 tons. Watson and Pauly hypothesized that this might be connected to Chinese policies, where governmental agencies in charge of overseeing the economy were also tasked with boosting output. Additionally, up until quite recently, Chinese officials were promoted based on improvements in productivity for their home provinces. China refuted the statement. Yang Jian, Director General of the Bureau of Fisheries within the Agriculture Ministry, was quoted as claiming that China's estimates were essentially right by the official Xinhua News Agency. However, the FAO acknowledged there were problems with their statistical returns dependability and for a while regarded data from China, especially agriculture statistics, differently from the rest of the world. Since the 1990s, China has become the world's largest producer of agriculture due to the tremendous development of the industry over the past few decades. Since the 1990s, China has become the world's largest producer of agriculture due to the tremendous development of the industry over the past few decades. Recent criticisms of China's agriculture business have focused on the environment and the overuse of marine wild fisheries resources. For instance, 
China eats a lot of fish meal and foraged fish, such as anchovy, sardine, and herring because of its massive agriculture industry, which subsequently depletes the wild fish resources across the world. And that's all from today's video. What are your thoughts on China's large high-tech fish farms? Comment down below, like and subscribe to your channel to get updated about more such videos.